How much internet speed do you actually need for your home? Does getting more bandwidth automatically means a better experience? Does getting more bandwidth automatically guarantees a better gaming experience? You see, on this channel I have posted many videos to do with getting faster Wi-Fi, faster connectivity, and every single time I do that, I get two types of opposing comments. I get the first type saying, wow, this was awesome. But then I get the other type which say, didn't work for me at all, this is nonsense. How is that possible? How is the same video giving me two radical opinions? So today, let's dive into how much bandwidth you actually need and how to work it out so you have an amazing online experience. All right, let's do this. Hey, welcome to another episode of Talking Tech with the Techie Guy. My name is Liron Segev, where I make tech simple. If you're into phones, gadgets, apps, tips and tricks and how to, hit that subscribe button and let's get on to today's show. So the reason so many people are just simply frustrated by their internet speed is because there isn't one solution that fits all. So how do you choose? How do you choose the best bandwidth package for you that's not going to leave you frustrated and you're not going to be overpaying for something you don't actually need? Well, it actually boils down to four factors that you need to know about before making that decision. And today I'm going to break them all down so that you know what you need to do. Well, let's start at the top. When you're buying a package from your ISP, you're buying speed and you're buying the data. So connectivity gets capped at 10 megabits per second and 100 megabits per second or whatever your ISP gives you. And then your data, it's typically unlimited, but they do say, should you abuse it, they have the right to slow you down. So they call it throttling. So there still seems to be some confusion about what bandwidth is. So let's break it down into something like roads. If you buy a road with two lanes, there's only a certain number of cars that can travel down that road. If you buy a road with five lanes, well, of course, many more cars can travel down that road. Same as bandwidth. The higher the bandwidth, the more traffic that can be pushed down that road. But logically, you would think, great, I have to get a bigger road, more lanes, more cars, more traffic going down that road, and therefore a better online gaming experience or an online surfing experience, right? Well, yes and no. You see, the next factor you need to understand is that when it comes to connectivity, there are actually two things. There is the upload speed, and then there is the download speed. Whilst your ISP is very happy to boast about your 100 megabits per second package, that's typically referred to as the download speed, but the upload speed is actually kept at a much smaller rate. Does this really matter? Well, yes to some and no to others. You see, if your typical internet usage is a bit of Netflix streaming, you're surfing some websites, you are sending emails, you're using social media, then the download speed is what you care about the most. Your computer sends a tiny little packet on the upstream, says, hey, I want this video. So you go to YouTube, little command says, show me this video. You push play and YouTube sends you all this data on the download to get to your computer. So for you, the download speed makes a huge difference. However, if you're a gamer or a streamer, well, the upload speeds makes a huge difference because from your computer, you're pushing a massive amount of data up the stream up into your freeway to your service provider and you want that to be nice and fast. But hang on, before you go and throw more money at your ISP, be aware that there's another factor that you've got to take into account. It's called latency. You see, to have this amazing online gaming experience, you actually don't need that much upload speed, but what you need is a very low latency. Now latency is essentially the time that it takes from the time that you send a command up into the server for them to actually process that command. You want that as close to zero as humanly possible. The quicker that is, the better your gaming experience. Just by throwing more bandwidth at this doesn't mean your latency is going to be reduced. And then of course, there's another factor called jitter. And jitter is essentially a disruption in your traffic. So going back to our road situation, imagine our road with 10 lanes all going in the same direction, but then people are making U-turns in the middle of the freeway, changing lanes, having accidents. You know what that does in the real world. Think of the traffic jams that are gonna be caused on that particular freeway, same as on your bandwidth. Every time you send a packet, it gets an acknowledgement. If that acknowledgement doesn't come, it starts to retry and send those packets again and again, causing lots of traffic jam. So latency and jitter are two additional factors that you need to understand. Okay, wow. So now we have a whole bunch of factors. We have the bandwidth, upload and download. We have latency and jitter. So how do we make a decision? How much bandwidth do we actually need? Well, the answer is that it boils down to two things. 
it boils down to what do you do online and how many devices do you do it with. So assuming that most people are going to be doing some Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, streaming those kind of content, as well as surfing the web, sending some emails, social media. Well, for you, the download speed is pretty important and the typical streaming services recommend five megabits per second for a good HD stream. Or if you're gonna go to 4K, well, then you have to bump that up to 25 megabits per second. However, remember this is per device. So if there's mom and dad all watching Netflix on two different devices, well, each one of them needs five megabits and five megabits giving you a combined 10 megabits per second so you can both watch it in HD without any problem and then there's the other factor of how many devices are actually on your network remember things like your tablets your laptops your security cameras your cloud backup all of those things take up bandwidth so that when mom and dad are trying to watch their videos at five megabits per second each if there's a hundred gigabytes of cloud backup happening at the same time you're gonna have an impact if you want more tips and tricks on how to troubleshoot your network getting more out of your wi-fi check out some of these cool videos down here hit the head below to subscribe if it's your first time here Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in one of those videos. Let's go.